Charlie Gatsy, thank you to the two people that clicked the link. Another quick live drive on the way to work today to keep the spirits up and to keep us ahead. Ooh, it's actually a little bit cold. It's actually a little bit cold. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Three people here. Let me know who does come in. Matia is here as per usual. Thanks for coming in. What time is it for you, bro? I get the same audience here every single time I do the live drive. So I'm guessing I've tapped into the later hours of, obviously tapped into the later PM hours for you guys. Couple of things to talk about today. Not too much. Once again, this is just a bit of way to fill content on what's going to be a very boring international break. Nothing really competitive for the Azuri. Nothing really competitive for anybody. Just dead fixtures to make sure that players get injured before Easter. Just dead fixtures to make sure that players don't get their recovery time properly before the end of the season. An absolute waste of time. An absolute waste of football. Why can't we just close out the seasons in peace? There are 11 people here right now, which is really nice. Like the video if you are here. Only Mattia has liked it so far. I can see that one person has, and it has to be Mattia. Has to be Mattia. So make sure you like the video if you are here. And let's start um, by acknowledging and paying our respects to a very, very influential figure um, for Serie A, but more so importantly for Fiorentina. Rest in peace to Joe Barone, at 57 years old, has passed away from a cardiac arrest. Um, the game between Fiorentina and Atalanta was respectfully and rightfully postponed. And it was later announced that the cardiac arrest unfortunately resulted in, um, in fatality. And that's very, very sad because he was a very, very impactful person. And his, his influence extended way past the realms of Florence. I mean, his influence in New York City and more specifically Brooklyn with the Brooklyn Italians and that community, very well noted, um, very well loved and respected throughout multiple communities in multiple countries. And that's a huge, huge, huge loss for the city of Florence, for Fiorentina, the club. Um, it's a huge figure for Serie A to lose and my heart goes out to his family. It goes out to the Fiorentina fans and everyone associated with the club because these sort of things require rebuilds and this is going to be a tough one. A tough one for the club. Um, and you know, they're, they're still mourning the tragic loss of Davide Astori, which we all still think about every single year. And it's just another another realm of heartbreak for this club and my heart does go out to Fiorentina and my heart does go out to every single one of their fans so RIP rest in peace to Joe Barone a true lover of culture a true pioneer of um, Italian football and the community aspect of Italian football that comes with it moving on um, we have the and hello to everybody in the chat thank you very much um, moving on to the Francesco Acerbi incident, which I now find to be hilarious and comical. And I'm going to tell you all why I find it hilarious and comical. Just a spoiler alert, I'm really sorry if my opinion here hurts someone's feelings, but I just, I try to speak as objectively as possible. If Acerbi is doubling and tripling down on the fact that he did not say this, he clearly either did not say it or he backs himself to the point where there is no evidence to persecute him for this. From what I'm reading, he's called him a loser or a piece of shit or something like that. And the terminology is extremely similar in terms of a sledge in Italian. Whether the word is nero or the same word with a G sound in the middle. I don't know. I'm starting to not care. I want this to get sorted well before we come back from international break because I'm going to selfishly admit I want my team to go and win this title with some motherfucking attitude in them. I don't want us to limp to this title because we're getting small little fractures, small little cracks in the glass. Deal with it and if he's guilty, send the guy packing. Deal with it or if he's not found guilty, let him know that for 
club reasons and for image reasons. You're going to sit out for the next couple of games, but we expect you back for the squad for the remaining six or seven weeks for the season. In which case, get on the pitch, show your disgusting attitude any way, shape or form you want and grit our way to more results. I'm only saying this because this never stops teams in the past. Teams go through this shit all the time and they pick themselves up, they dust themselves off and they go and they dominate after that. I want this team to really be galvanized towards the end of this season. We are going to come back from international break very fresh unless someone does an injury. Very fresh. We should have almost a full squad back. Augusto should only be a few days back from returning. Arnautovic should be ready to come back. Juan Cuadrado has already been named in the provisional squad for Udinese. We're, we're going to have a full squad of athletes to choose from. I'm not really going to cop this whole, oh, we might drop points here and there. We might do this. We might do that. Yeah, of course, we might drop one or two. But I expect us to go on and piss this league now. I'm not budgeting for points dropped versus points gained for Milan. And if this Acerbi headline is the only kink in our armor besides the elimination from Atletico, I'm not buying it. I'm not taking it. It's not an excuse. Effort. It's literally, fuck it. Go and show the world that no matter what happens, this Inter remains the same. If it comes out that there is solid evidence against Acerbi here, make an example of him and either cancel the contract or bench him till the end of the season. It's not rocket science. But, and once again, I'm sorry if this offends a couple of people. If there is no evidence and Acerbi is doubling and tripling down, you know what? Back him. Back him and say, you know what? If there's no proof, there's no proof. You make sure that you get on that pitch and you rough up everybody there physically. You win this title, you get clean sheets. You go back and you show the world that there's no reason to derail this squad and this Scudetto because that's the reason that this is happening. It's a pure derail, a pure derail. And I'm not buying it. I don't think that this should derail our season because it's not like everybody else is healthy. I just came off a recorded video with Alejandro from the Bianco Neri zone and it was just, it was slander city from both of us towards his club. They still don't know who their manager is going to be next season. Neither do Napoli. Milan have Europa League fixtures coming up. They also don't know if they need to sell Leao or Manyan. So for the fans of our club that think that this incident is going to derail us or that it's going to be a serious impact, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. This can't drag out. The excuses need to stop before they start. Make a call inter and make it ASAP. Make it in the next 11 days. Because when we get back from international break, I want to ransack Empoli. I want to pump Cagliari and I want to beat Udinese. I want to go into, I want to approach the derby knowing that we can draw that game and celebrate the league. We need to go, I want to go into that game knowing that Milan need to beat us to stop us. And if that's the case, well, they're going to have probably the biggest uphill battle. The biggest uphill battle of them all. 100% you're guilty until proven innocent. And I'm not saying that he's innocent. I'm saying that if there was evidence, we would have seen it by now. And those who watch this channel know that I did this exact same routine and exact same dance with the bananas. The stupid banana incident. Where they tried to say that we were waving bananas and then the only image that circulated was a photo from 2015. And I came on this channel and I go, so you're telling me in a stadium of 73,000 people, 35 media outlets, 250 cameras, 250 microphones, and everything else that you can't find me a video, a GIF, or a second still image of these bananas. You're all a bunch of fucking liars. You're all a bunch of liars. And that's what we're going through again here now. This might just be the second false racism flag against us this season. And if it is, laugh your way to the bank. Laugh your way to the bank. If it comes out that he's proven guilty, I am sure every single one of our fans will put their hand up and go, okay, 
that's a really shit thing to do. And guess what, Francesco? We actually have the luxury of knowing that we don't need you till for the end of the season. And because of your age, you know what, brother? I'm really sorry, but we actually don't need you next season either. I mean, I'm sure you'd be a great asset, but we don't need you. We don't. You can't need a mid-30s centre-back if you're the champions. You can't. That's a replaceable position and a replaceable asset. So maybe, maybe Francesco has doubled and tripled down because he knows that he doesn't have a lifeline. He knows he doesn't have a chance. If he's found guilty here, that's it. He leaves before the Scudetto and he doesn't get another job in a big club. But if there's no evidence, he, trust me, he will, he will run with this till the end and back and he will stay and he will start. <laughs> so everyone needs to mentally prepare for, for both, for both options because they're both very, very realistic options. What else is there to talk about since we spoke the last couple of days? Um, I spoke about players coming back from injury. Um, I just did a video with the Bianconeri zone where we spoke a little bit about when when they th um, he thinks and I think that we can be champions. I think it's going to be in that, that triple game bracket, uh, either the game before Milan, the Derby itself, or the one afterwards. We spoke about Juve's fixture against Milan, how he thinks that they're not going to win. Um, I said I'm hoping for a situation where Milan is leading and then Juve get a penalty in the last minute and then they have to decide basically whether or not they want to roll the ball in the back of the net to get a point for Champions League or whether they miss on purpose for us to not be champions. Um, yeah, Crisis Inter, as always, man. Plus 14 in the league. Our rivals have got no idea what they're doing next season, but we're the ones in a crisis. Absolutely. Absolutely. So no, not buying it one bit. There's 12 people still here. Only nine people have liked the video. That's shit. Like the video if you're still here, please. We got to 20 likes last time or 25 and we got to 35 viewers. I know that we're not going to get that today, but for a live drive, we take what we get. Um, international break. The following players uh, can potentially... What's going on, you know? Um, the following players that will go on international break can potentially come back with injury. I don't think Damian will. He won't get the minutes and he doesn't get injured. Fratesi, watch him come back with a knock. He'll get plenty of minutes. Varela and Bastoni will also play. Um, I don't think that any of them come back too hurt or too knocked up, but there could be some rotation that comes with that. There could be some rotation that comes with that. We've covered the Acerbi thing. We've covered uh, players returning from injury. We've covered international break. It's been a nice quick 13 minutes. I'm not going to stay around for much longer. If there's anything that we need to talk about or any headlines that have come out, let me know. Um, the only other thing I think there is to talk about is the fact that there are contract extensions that have been delayed until the end of the season. Oh, no, there's a couple of important things to talk about still. The contracts have been delayed until the end of the season, and we know... We now know the big reason for that is the oak tree loan. The oak tree loan that they have said that they are not confident in and will not grant an extension to Sonning. This is not horrible news. In fact, this is expected news. And to anybody that thinks this is horrible news, I need to remind them the sort of budget that we've been working with, the sort of limitations we have been working with, the fact that we have invisible owners, the fact that we have been coasting through the last three years doing damage control because our directors are the best in the country and our manager just now so happens to look like the best in the country and our squad, thanks to our directors being the best in the country, has remained competitive and will now probably win the Serie A. Suning leaving represents the following risks. Despite the limitations, Steven Zhang is an Inter fan. Steven Zhang is an Inter fan, and that's why he has still had the best interest at heart. If we are absorbed by Oak Tree, then you run the risk and know that whoever is taking over this club does not value it from an emotional standpoint, does not value it from anything apart from the fact that it needs to be equalized business-wise. And what happens with that? You sell off your assets. And we still have plenty of assets in our squad, which is why Mattia is saying Lautaro won't extend. Now, I wouldn't say mark my words because I do believe that an extension actually will come for Lautaro, but I believe it will be negotiated in a manner that says that he can leave at a certain point, which is fine. After the Champions League and some of the games that have happened since, I've made a point to stay on this, say on this channel and say that everybody is replaceable. 
And I say this because we had to go through a season where we lost Romelu Lukaku, Ashraf Hakimi and Christian Eriksen. Then we lost Lukaku again. Andre Onana, Milan Skriniar, Marcelo Brozovic. We are seasoned veterans at damage control. We can lose anybody in this starting 11 and we will still fight for the Serie A next season because Juventus are shit. Milan are not good. Napoli are trash. Roma, Lazio and Atalanta will not compete for the title. Serie A in general is weak. This is not a time to panic if we need to keep selling an asset or two. It sucks. I know. It sucks. I know. Sorry, reception's going to cut out in a second, but stay with me. If Lautaro leaves, you can guarantee 120 million euros. You can guarantee it. I guarantee it. 120 million euros will come into the bank. If we decide to sell Lautaro, 120 mil will come into the bank. If we sell Marcus Turam, 60 mil will come into the bank. Denzel Dumfries will get 25 if he leaves. If someone wants to buy Hakan for the, for the plus 40 plus Valenza, it has to happen. It has to happen. And this team under Marotta, Auxilio and Inzaghi will stay competitive next season. I don't want this to happen because I truly feel like with the same squad we've got now, we could piss Serie A again next season. We really could. Just expect the worst, yeah? Just expect the worst. But I'm here to tell you that the worst this season is not the worst. We went through worse. Way worse. Whatever happens to this Inter in the off-season, we will be fine. Even if the ownership pisses off. And I think a lot of our rival fans now have realized that. They're like, holy shit. We can banter the Inter fans all they want, for, for all we want, for the debt and the finances. But guess what? That Inter squad is ready for the Campionato 24-25. They're ready. We're ready for it. We're ready for it today. No one else is ready for it. Nobody else. You seriously telling me Milan are ready for next season? Bro, they haven't decided whether Manian or Leao stays. They are looking at moving a key asset. Will they be able to handle that damage control? Will Pioli be able to handle it the same way Inzaghi did? Will their directors, who do not have the passion as Maldini and Masada, who don't have the passion as Marotta and Auxilio, are they going to be able to recover next season? My short answer is probably not. Are Napoli going to move on Oshimen or Krava? One of them. Are they going to recover? I don't know. Juve. Please. Your squad is so overrated, it needs open heart surgery. Locatelli is worth half of the money that you paid for him. The only world-class player I think that you guys have on your team has got two ACL injuries that he needs to recover from. He's never going to recover from them. Move him on. Kies is done. Brema, I like him, but the guy's the fourth choice center back for the Brazil national team. The only reason he's going to the friendlies is because Gabriel dropped out. You know, it could be the end of the Sunning Out campaign, Ian. And, and even if Oak Tree take over, they're going to have to move three of our big players for me to look at our squad and go, oh, shit, now we're in trouble next season. And before, I don't know. But looking at what we've done this season, you cannot convince me that I should be anywhere near as worried. More importantly, the one after number 19. Or 19, where the doom and gloom and the perish was there. And everyone thought that we wouldn't survive the week, the month, the season. Allegri guarantees 15 points per season. Inter will never win anything again. We are here. We are here. Let's close this campionato out properly. And like I said, with attitude, with attitude. Everybody else can do it. And I know that we're dealing with this, this bad headline, obviously, but we're not the only team dealing with a bad headline. I truly believe that our headline is not as bad as the rest. Who are these people trying to cross the road without a crossing man? I'm in a, I'm in a 1.5 ton vehicle or a one ton vehicle and you're dragging all 51 kilometers of yourself in front of my car. Fucking hell bro, a bicycle can run you over, but by all means.
Thank you guys for joining. Still 15 of you here right now. I'm about four or five minutes away from work. So if I forgot anything that you want me to bring up, just let me know. Other than that, we move and we move on. International break is going to be boring. Very, very boring. It's not competitive. There's no point. I'm not even going to tune into the games. I don't even know. I think we're playing in the USA. Are we playing the USA? I don't even know what's going on with the this international break. And to be honest, I've got such a busy weekend. I don't think I'm going to tune into I think a nice break from the round ball game. Watch some... Watch some... Uh, I said this would happen. They have no track record of paying their debts. They borrow from Peter to pay... You've been saying it for years, but at the same time, Ian, we haven't broken any laws. We haven't broken any rules. I know a lot of people want to say that, that we're breaking the rules, but we're not. We're not. It's our own privatized debt. We look stupid, we look beta, but at the end of the day, we weren't supposed to stay competitive, bro. We weren't supposed to do that. Everyone thought that our directors would work, walk, our players would be sold, it didn't happen. Two Copper Italias, two or three super, I gotta go, it's gonna be a busy day at work. Thank you everyone for joining me. Uh, we had a high of 18 here, 11 people have liked the video. Make sure you like it before you leave. Thank you so much guys, I'll be back soon. Ciao, forza inter.